Please rise. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text for this morning's message comes out of the gospel reading that Pastor Lee read a few moments ago from Matthew chapter 14. And I'll read again verse 17. The disciples said to Jesus, We have only five loaves here and two fish. This is the text. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, when was the last time that you simply wanted to get away from it all? Just kind of disappear to some place where nobody can find you or get in touch with you, where no emails can track you down and you're expected to somehow return them, where nobody who wants something from you can come a calling. In our story for this morning, Jesus had reached that point where he not only wanted to get away, but he needed to get away. Because you see, Matthew tells us that he had just received some very sad news. His cousin and forerunner, John the Baptist, had been killed, beheaded by King Herod. And John's disciples had come to Jesus with that sad news. And upon hearing that, Matthew says, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there to a desolate place by a boat and by himself. Jesus simply needed to get away. But as was often the case, and we see this again and again in the life and ministry of Jesus, is that no matter where he went and no matter the reason that he needed to get away, people sought him out. And we're told that even though Jesus had gotten in a boat and gone across the lake to be where he wanted to be, the people caught wind of it and they began to follow him on foot around the edges of the shore. So that when Jesus saw the crowds, we're told, he had compassion on them. And he healed their sick. That tells us, doesn't it, about the nature of human need. What human need is, is that it, what it does is it stirs compassion in us. Compassion is that emotion that we feel when we encounter something or we encounter someone who is in need. It moves us forward into the pain of somebody else. And it motivates us to do something about it. It even motivated Jesus in our story. As he was willing to cut short his time away and minister to the crowds. Well, apparently, it took most of the day. Because toward evening, the disciples, they too had compassionate hearts, and they came to Jesus with this suggestion. They said, Lord, this is a desolate place. Send the crowds away to buy food for themselves. You see, Jesus' disciples in that moment were thinking about this situation not only from a practical point of view, but also from compassionate hearts. They were thinking of Jesus, who probably was quite tired after all of this. But they were thinking also of the crowds of people. People who would have been hungry. People who would have been tired too. You see, there were no snack vendors in the group. There was no food trucks that pulled up to provide for people. And no one actually would have even thought to pack some kind of dinner when they follow Jesus into that harsh landscape. And so, it, thinking both from a practical point of view and also from hearts of compassion, the disciples made a reasonable suggestion to Jesus. And you know, it was all just a fine moment of reasonableness and order. It was very Lutheran. Until Jesus turned everything upside down by saying to his disciples, they need not go away. 
you give them something to eat. All of a sudden, what Jesus was doing was challenging them to take their compassion to the next level. From the idea of the crowds providing for themselves, and now he's challenging them to provide for them. And I'm thinking in that moment, there might have been one or two of those disciples that thought, we got to get away from all of this. Now, Matthew, he doesn't tell us a whole lot of detail in terms of what happened next, but we can kind of imagine. We can imagine that upon hearing this mandate that Jesus gave them, the disciples scattered out into this massive crowd, maybe looking around to see if there's any available resource. Well, somebody had had the forethought, or maybe it was a little kid and their mother had this forethought about packing a little bit of a snack of some bread and some fish. And so the disciples spotted it, they kind of confiscated it, they brought it to Jesus, and they said, we have here something, we have only five loaves and two fish. Now, before we go much further into the story, we need to talk a little bit about what those provisions would have been, because we're not talking about massive loaves of bread and giant fish. What we're talking about is the likelihood that somebody brought a lunch that would be probably fit into this bag or something like it. And so there probably would have been some bread about that size and some sardines about that size because that was the standard fare in terms of the kinds of little snacks that people would provide themselves or their kids in between meals. So what did they bring to Jesus? Five of these. Two of these. I'm not going to open these. Pastor Coleman would kill me if I opened it up here. (laughs) These are actually pretty good. I had two of them this morning. This is it. They bring this to Jesus and they say, we only have this to provide. But what is this among so many? The key words are, we have only. Now, what is it about that word only that kind of jumps off the page for us? You know, it's a word that we often use. But it's a word that you and I use when we are taking stock of a situation and we are looking at the limited availability of a resource in front of us, and then we're thinking about the limited ability and strength and ability that we have to maybe somehow use that resource. It's a very limiting word, that word only. It's almost apologetic. But what it reveals is, is that in that challenging moment, The thought that we have is about what we can do and not do, and it doesn't even occur to us to take into consideration what God can do. And that's what happened here. You see, in the moment when Jesus imposed that need on them, their only thought was, we can't do this. It's impossible. Lord, you are burdening us, maybe even making us feel a little guilty, but you are burdening us with the challenge of feeding 5,000 plus people. And all we have is this. We can't do it. I wonder how many of us here this morning have had thoughts like that lately. Maybe you're facing some difficulties in life that are so daunting that you're thinking to yourself, I can't do this. Maybe you have some family challenges with your children or maybe with your marriage. Or maybe there's, there's some kind of employment issue that 
all of a sudden just landed in your lap and you feel totally like a fish out of water in terms of trying to deal with it. Or maybe you just received some disheartening news about your health. And the first thought you have is, it's too much. I can't handle this. And the word only is in there someplace. Well, in our story, Jesus' response was classic. He told his disciples, give the food to me, and then direct the people to sit down. So Matthew says that Jesus took that food, he blessed it, and he broke it, and then he gave it to his disciples so they could give it to the people. And the amazing miracle was that he gave it, and he gave it, and he gave it, and he gave it. And he gave it so much that when everybody had eaten and they were satisfied, the disciples went around with baskets and they were able to fill those baskets to the brim of what was left over. In Jesus' hands, what started out as only turned into enough. You see, dear friends, where only talks about what we can do, enough talks about what Jesus can do. And the amount of resource and ability and, and, and all the things that go into taking care of a situation, all that we can muster, it might be a little bit or it might be a whole lot. But Jesus is not limited by that. In His hands... What can be accomplished is more than you and I can even imagine. And that's what the Bible reminds us of. But then it makes sense. Because that's the kind of Savior and Lord that you and I have. The Lord and the Savior who by His death and resurrection earned for us the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life in heaven... That is way more than any of us could ever imagine would have come out of the life of a single person. So, dear friends, the next time you are burdened with the thought of only, remember what Jesus did in our story for this morning. Only doesn't get the last word. No, in Jesus' hands, it is enough. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus our Lord.